I went. I left my credit card on the website here, so I'm just grabbing it. Hi, I left my credit card here. Yeah, let me just. You want me to call you back? It's the Club Red Podcast. Club Red Podcast. Club Red Podcast. Welcome to the Puff Fresh Podcast, episode number 14. My name is Dan. I'm joined by... Jonathan. J-Webb. J-Webb. That's your name? That's my name. This week on the show, I have an interview with Buddy Nielsen from Senses Fail. If you want to go to the interview, look in the description. Uh, I have the start time there because we are about to talk about a lot of stuff. And if you don't like us and you're here for Buddy, hell, I don't blame you. Just go do your thing. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, J-Webb. Yeah. This week was uh this is a good past week. A lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot quite a bit of stuff. Um I think the biggest thing is the Kevin Lyman whole that whole thing where he pretty much stated that ne- next year's warp tour there's gonna be no kids on the tour. But you hit us with a quote, J Webb. All right. From his interview, which he claims was misquoted. Um, I'm already working on Warp Tour for next year, and you know what? There are things that need to be fixed. The community needs to fix what due process is, what judicial systems are, and we have to stop putting false information on the internet. Slow down the social media blur. None of you are retaining. People can't retain the name of a band and the song they play. Brains have turned into spaghetti. <laughs> into <laughs> you, can stop, you can stop the quote right there. What? Okay, so my issue with that part of the quote is like, yo, you're looking at the problems that we have after this year's warp tour and it's that we're posting things online like you have from porch step admitting to sexing with minors and you know having sexual encounters with them you have guys like johnny craig getting kicked off of warp tour because he sexually harassed his freaking merch girl but the issue isn't that the issue is the fact that we're talking shit online so, you know, my bad. Come on. My bad. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry for the tweets, everybody. Um, if they, You know, but all of us, we should apologize to Kevin Lyman for tweeting our, uh, our, our uh, disapproval towards these actions, and we should just carry on. The second part of the quote went on to say that uh, next year, we're going to have no kids on the tour. It's going to be really tough if you want to be on this tour and are 21 and under, whether it's artists, crew, anyone. And I think a lot of people took that quote and kind of um, misconstrued the meaning of it because a, I, a lot of people thought that it was going to be no fans 21 and over included, which that wouldn't you realize that would never happen. That, yeah, that's not a thing. No, because when I like tweeted about it, people were like, it doesn't mean like people under 21 can't go to the show or anything. I was, yeah, no, no. Everybody tweeted about it. The, the assumption is no, it's what? Why would he who would go to that festival? <laughs> 21 and over nobody now in the in the morning you realize that once you become 20 over 21 years old your warped tour experience changes completely you, you like sleep in until like noon like <laughs> you know you're like oh i'm gonna miss uh fucking i, I don't know i was gonna say bad rabbits again yeah uh, damn it damn it i miss bad rabbits again no, they're great damn it i miss icon for hire shit exactly new year's day yeah miss them. oh shit Shit, did I miss Family Force 5 again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, D- J-Web's the only Family Force 5 friend that I that I have. Actually, yeah. the only Family Force 5 fan that I know uh, exists. But either way. um, And then he went on Twitter and said that the article got misquoted. And he said that, um, he said, once again, misquoted. Uh, said I would take a hard look at bands and crew being under 21. No age limits at the show. And no age limits on concert guard. So good that he cleared that up, but it kind of just seemed like he was perhaps backtracking. Yeah, I think if we're going to put an age limit on anything, it should be how old people should not have Twitters. Because <laughs> this guy... <laughs> his, his grammar is everything. Yeah. You're looking at the quote now. I, I said I want to take a hard look. And bands and crew. I said at to... Kind yeah, of, yeah, because when you're trying to read incorrect grammar, your brain fixes it, yeah. which is something that us young generation knows how to do yeah it's i don't know yeah well you know kevin lyman i you know i think i'm all about like a warp tour like having a year off and just kind of yes first of all build hype second of all just fix what needs to actually be fixed and i'm not like you're i know j webb you're completely opposed to the 21 and over rule Yes, I am opposed to it, but I can also kind of see how it may be beneficial if it's kept kind of like as an unwritten rule. 
not necessarily, hey, this is set in stone, Mm -hmm. more so like, hey, we have a lot of partying atmosphere going on. Maybe we don't want to, you know, have any liability issues, which I'm pretty sure like police officers don't care about bans on more underage drinking or, or anything like that. And, um, Obviously, the maturity level that an individual has isn't uh, based on their age necessarily. So it's not like, oh, you're 21 years old. Guess what? You matured. Um, exactly. So I, yeah, I, I can kind of see like why it's it's stupid. But you know, you want to look at it as like, uh, hey, we just want these bands to be maybe like have more experience. Not necessarily 21 and under. Or, like can't be on the tour. Maybe it's like, hey, if this is your second year as a band and you don't know the ropes yet. Maybe you kind of got to earn it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, even putting any kind of restrictions is just kind of stupid in my eyes. Because look at like Echo Smith. How young are those kids? And they, when they were on the tour last year, I know one of them was under 16. Yeah. And like no problems with Echo Smith. None. Well, that's because they have a dadager who kind of. Um, True. But yeah. Keeps it, them in line. And probably raise them correctly as well. Well, so. you know, I don't, I can't comment about that because I don't know how that dude raises them. But, you know, I think that another issue with this whole thing is that it still does not address the victims of these, like, sex crimes. Like, hey, maybe next year on Warp we'll have a safe place where any women who are triggered by seeing, like, a band dude because they were either uh, treated inappropriately, raped, whatever, are, or just feeling, like, have, like, anxiety going around, like, groups of people. Maybe we have, like, a safe spot for them to go. Like, maybe, you know, we just kind of, or we have, like, more outspoken band members, or we do sexual harassment training. We, you know, do something that isn't just, all right, well, we've had it with you kids. Fuck off. Like, he's mad that, essentially, like, the younger people are talking shit, maybe? I don't know. That's That's the vibe that I'm getting from him. It's not, like, fixing the issue. It's more of... Well, this is what I see the issue is, but it's not actually the issue, and him taking a stance on it. Well, how do you feel like Kevin's dealt with Warp this year? This year? Yeah, honestly. It's been a complete mess. Yeah. Like, I can't even, for like the past years of Warp Tour, it seems this year was the most disappointed anyone's ever been about a lineup, and it's also the most disappointed people have felt with how it all went together because last year there was the whole thing with volumes and then the girl going missing, which was a huge thing. Uh huh. And he just like took them off the tour because they were young. But right. he comes back this year and puts other idiots on the tour again. And it's not, there's not, he's not correcting anything. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And something needs to happen about it. And he's trying to fix it, but he's, it's not, that's well, the wrong way about it. In listeners to this, once you get to the buddy interview, he kind of hits on this point, which I think that, you know, a lot of us may not be considering, myself included, until I actually heard Buddy talk on it. Um, you know, Kevin's just a concert promoter who's looking to make money. And I mean, that's it, it, the very, very core of it. That's what he is. So you look at the fact, like, how is he accountable for these bands actions? If you're going to hold Kevin accountable, hold everybody in that band's party accountable. When we talked about it last week, when Austin from Set It Off was being inappropriate with with girls, how come his band members weren't weren't hold, keeping him in check? How come when Jake McElfresh from from porch sep was texting all these underage girls or how come when he has all of these lyrics that are about having like mental health issues why wasn't the label or management kind of looking to get him help before it became a problem for other people you know kevin is doing a lot of things that are really messed up and i don't think he is very sensitive to these sort of um ideas of sexual harassment or just women's rights in general there's so much outrage over warp tour and the way that he's handling it that he needs to make a stance and he needs to do it in a way that isn't blaming everybody for using social media that isn't saying that go to the police officers make a statement get a somebody arrested if you're really in danger do this and this and this don't tell us what to do don't tell victims what to do. You don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. You're a uh, straight white male. You have no idea what anybody's going through in that sense. It's v- incredibly difficult for myself as a straight white male to be sensitive to these things. So I go out of my damn way to try to even grasp what it would be like to fucking know what these girls are going through. Right? Yeah. Is he doing that? He's no. just looking to... to blame the way that we're handling it how about the way that that you're handling it man you had blood on the dance floor on warp tour when all those allegations against davi uh were were coming out you had ronnie radke on warp tour 
after his ex-girlfriend posted a picture with a black eye. Like, yeah, the Ronnie Radke pled no contest, but what does no contest mean, right? It means, oh, I did it. I'll just take the punishment and not go to jail. I, I, allegedly, I'm not allowed to, sorry, I'm not allowed to, to be as vocal about that. But, you know, Kevin, as a promoter, is making money off these bands, which isn't bad in the sense of a promoter. Maybe we're putting too much responsibility on him, but at the same time, maybe he should go out of his way to seek more responsibility because Warp Tour has his name plastered all over it. He'll take full credit for all of the good things Warp does, but once it starts shitting, does, is he taking credit for that? No, and he has he has to have a social responsibility for it because he's creating this environment and he's putting these people in the situation. Mm. And I understand it's at the core, it's to make money, but you can't be putting other people in danger to fill your pockets. That's true. No, that's absolutely true. I hope it gets to the day where he just gets f- fucking sick of it. Yeah. And he's like, I'm tired of all these people talking to me on Twitter and calling out my spelling errors and all this stupid shit. And he's just going to be like, you know what, f- just, just walk away from it. That's the... The best possible scenario. I, I, I don't want him to walk away. I want him to actually learn and be rehabilitated with his mind and try to just be more aware of, I guess, women's issues. I, this is what it comes down to. I don't think he has a grasp on women's issues. No, not at all. Remember a few years ago when that article came out when it was like, yo, there's no bands on Warped Tour that are girls. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like he made the point like, yo, there's not a lot of girl bands out there in the scene so it doesn't make sense and a lot of us were kind of like yeah kevin like we we completely agree with you and to this day it's true there's not really a big pool of women but looking back at that and just seeing now maybe that yeah maybe that journalist who had that angle and wanted that story that way was onto something mm-hmm. because i do think that misogyny is very um present within the warped environment 100%. and i don't know um and then to and then to say and then to retract it say that he was misquoted, um, I mean I guess that falls on the stranger. If that's the case, I mean he's saying he was misquoted. He tweeted it, so who knows? But he's saying he was misquoted about the age limit at the show. Oh, okay. That's the only thing he was saying that it was misquoted on. But I think everyone understood that. Yeah, it was just I mean there are idiots on Twitter like, who oh, I'm being misquoted again. Well, yeah, yeah. Say something. Say something worthwhile, and maybe people won't change your words like if your words have meaning and impact and change and move people they aren't going to be they aren't going to be altered listen if set it off has enough money to hire a publicist i think kevin lyman should go about and do that too (laughs) he's been doing this for way longer i i think what j webb said you just want him to walk away i think i just want him to walk away from twitter (laughs) exactly if kevin lyman was off twitter that'd be but then again someone would argue maybe puff fresh should be off twitter because we we do talk talk mad shit, we joke. Yeah, but we, why does we he, spell words right? <laughs> why does Kevin Lyman have a Twitter? Why does why does he need like why does he need a Twitter? Well, it's cool because during the during the shows, if somebody will tweet a problem like, "Hey, um, I'm having an issue finding this and this," and he'll tweet them and respond to them, so he'll help people out day of the show. Um, Pretty sure he still has a Yahoo Ligans email address too. A what? A Yahoo Ligans email. What Yahoo Ligans? It's like the baby Yahoo. Oh, is it like, like Yahoo for like alternative kids? Yeah. Really? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo Ligans. Um, but let's let's move on from this this Kevin stuff because we have plenty of other stuff to cover and we took up a huge chunk of time for someone who just doesn't know how to tweet. So Johnny Craig just came out with a twit longer. I think that was the website that he did it on. Twit Longer. Don't you love Twit Longer? I wish I had a fucking Twit Longer. But Johnny Craig said that Bless the Fall kicked slaves off of their fall tour and replaced them with Amorosa, which I think... <laughs> <laughs> I can't even... That's great. That's great. That's I love amazing. it. Uh, shout out to Bless the Fall for doing that and like having the balls and taking a stand and like actually kicking them off. I mean, it could be... I don't know, because they haven't said anything about it. Maybe it's just them not wanting to be associated with the name. But the fact that they brought Amorosa of all bands on to replace them, it's just... It's like a double. Like, yeah. You know what? Bye. And then, well, here's another kick step down. Like, right. Right. Here you go. Right. And I, you know what? Amorosa's good live. They're a good band and everything like that. And, you know, I don't have anything bad to say about the band. Uh, they make solid music. Um, Bradley and I may have had some issues in the past and everything. But all of that aside, it's just like... Talk, talking about like a perf- like from a live performance standpoint, I would much rather see Amorosa of than Slaves. So, and I'm sure as a as a 
as a musician and as a parent, yeah, Bo Boken's not going to want Johnny Craig around his daughter and his wife. Right, 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 right. It's a, it's a situational thing. Right, and I don't blame him for that. So not at all. Yeah, uh, shout out to shout out to Bless the Fall for being for being cool like that. Um, did you listen to the new State Champ song? I did. Did you like it? I loved it. I loved it too. I like the uh, I like the vocals more than anything. That's what everyone's been saying. Uh, that's well, that's what I've been saying. Maybe you were just looking at my Twitter because well, yeah, probably. I definitely said something about that. I just didn't like. <sighs> I don't know. I don't like I wasn't really into the earlier state champ stuff like everybody else was like I thought that I always thought they were a solid band and everything like that. My girlfriend's a really big fan of them. And, I, you know, obviously they have all their success at this point. But I always thought the vocals were kind of like a little bit too newfound glorious and too much of that like nasal pop punk thing, which is cool. And, you know, I was really into when I was a little bit younger. But now I, I'm more into like actual singing and I feel like Derek is finally finding his place as a vocalist and like making like good pop melodies and they have great harmonies and everything like that, which I think that could be attributed to Ryan Scott Graham because when that dude joined the band, they just started having harmonies, I guess. Uh, right. Because yeah, I do can sing. So um, I, I, I dig it. I dig their, uh, I hope their new direction becomes a lot more pop centered because they'd be a real good pop band. Yeah, it's Ever since they put out the acoustic EP, he like, even on the acoustic EP. Yeah, was no, that like was really good. Voice. No, it really was. I, I I forgot to mention that because, you know, reasons. But yeah, no, the, the acoustic EP is great. That yeah. One, yeah, I love it. Um, But yeah, everybody check out the new uh, State Champ song. Also, check out Movements, that new Fearless band. They just got signed. They only have like 500 Twitter followers right now, but like they're good. So if usually when I check out a band, I'll go like look at their social media numbers and like if they don't have a lot i'll be like oh they don't you know how people do that uh, you know you know how you do that you look at them like oh who's this band movements is great i like they have like some spoken word type of stuff that reminds me of like la dispute in like paradise fears type thing but it's it's like if the like paradise fears met the wonder years and like they had like a baby but then like la dispute got in the mix and it was kind of like we don't know who the father is you know yeah i feel that yeah and they're good so I, I bought all three of their songs from Bandcamp. <laughs> right, someone was, like, you told me to listen to them and I checked it out and I enjoyed it. And someone was saying that they'd only been a band. They put their first song out this year. In January. Yeah. And now they're signed to Fearless. That's nuts. Yeah. Well, they're good. They're right. real good. I like it. We'll see where it goes. I don't know. Um, the Academy is. Let's move on to them. Um, huge news with the Academy is camp. They are now following Pup Fresh on Twitter. <laughs> That's it. That's the huge news. That's the huge news. We were the tenth like account that they followed. They follow all the members in the band, like a William Beckett fan account, their publicist, uh, their labels, us, and then Gabe Supporta. So they followed us before they followed Gabe Supporta. They don't follow any of the Fallout Boys. It was no Pup Bre- Fresh. No Brendans. No nobody. No 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 Travi McCoy. Uh-uh. Uh uh-uh. uh, they they got a lot of people they could follow, right? And they chose to follow Pup Fresh. Right, there you I'm go. gonna slide in those DMs and be like, "Yo, <laughs> nobody else can DM them." Yo, there there's 11 people that have the chance to do this, and five of them are you. <laughs> so They're like, oh shit, this is an accident. Unfollow. <laughs> That's what it was. That's probably what it was. I can't wait for that day. You know, I <laughs> don't worry. I have screen caps, so even if that happens, I'll be I'll still be able to brag that right, you know, all that matters. the Academy has followed me, <laughs> but fresh. <laughs> but no, the Academy has uh, Siski tweeted or Instagrammed that big news is coming soon, and that he just got off the phone with Santi. Hashtag AH10. Are we, do you expect a tour? What are you expecting? I feel like if it's not a tour, people are going to be disappointed and pissed off. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You can't come. You can't hype. Something like this with, yeah, a age ten. Yeah, don't be vague. Plastered everywhere. You don't be vague. If it was nothing, you would just tell us, right? You don't. But you know what? The format a while ago, they did a tweet like news coming soon, and it was like a vinyl reissue. That's a, if it's a vinyl reissue, yeah. I feel like people are gonna be like, "Are you kidding?" Just me? got off the phone with Santi. He said that he has a vinyl press. <laughs> just got off the phone with Santi. Uh, he knows. Uh, he knows of a label that does cassette tapes now. So we're gonna go to. We're going to go get cassettes of our albums done and sell them to you. Just got it off, has to be a tour. Just got off the phone with Santi. We, we're selling bucket hats. 
like I don't know. It has to be something big. Like, please be a tour. Don't just be more like festival dates or anything like that. Uh, Riot Fest is the day of my sister's wedding, so I can't go. Tour so that I can see the Academy is. Fun story. They were the first live band I saw. Well, actually, Hanson was the first live band I saw. But the first show that I went to, that was 1997. The first show that I went to where I, like, was a fan and, like, my dad didn't bring me was Something Corporate, Stray Light Run, Hidden in Plain View, The Academy Is. Academy Is was the first live band on that show that I saw. So, that you know, I've been a fan since then. That was January 2005. Jeez. So, you know what? They have a special place in my heart, and I'm, you know, if they tour, I'll be there. Will you be there, or are you, you're not a fan? I'm a fan of The Academy Is. I just got into them super late. Yeah. I See, I got out of them. Probably when you're getting into them, because yeah. like I, after Santi, I didn't really like even Santi was hard for me to get into initially, but I ended up getting into it like eventually. Mm-hmm. But I then they just I don't know, they they did Warp Tour in 2007, was it or 2008? It was 2008. That was a good lineup. I saw Cobra Starship, Gym Class Heroes, and the Academy is all at the same show. They did bring it. All of them on stage. I took pictures. Three sets. All three sets. They sang the song. No, no that would have been cool. It was a Cobra set, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have been, that would have been something. <laughs> like oh, the gym class heroes. They're singing. Yeah, they're singing. Right, right. But that was Jack's mannequin was on that that tour. Jesus, dude, it was a good tour. Two thousand eight. What's well, Kevin Lemon doing there? He knew how to book them then. Yeah, maybe that's what it should be. Maybe there should be like. Going back to it, maybe it should just be older bands that, like, have kind of proved themselves. Or like a warped All-Stars lineup. Yeah. Like, like bring back Katy Perry. Yeah. Fall Out Boy. Yeah. Make sure Panic does their first warp tour. Uh, but then you got to have, like, the has-been stage. Exactly. You know, like, the bands that used to be big, but, like, nobody gives a shit about anymore. Yeah. Bands that I'm not going to say because I don't want to offend anybody. Um, What other news we got? So, that Transviolet cassette tape drama, do you hear about, we posted about that. Did you read into that at all? A little bit. So I like, saw that it was like random people getting cassettes at their house. Which isn't that nothing, weird? But yeah, I would find that cool as hell. Right. If there was a reason for it. If right. I didn't give out my address and I was just like, oh shit. Right. Uh, so what happened was this band Transviolet, who have one song, sent a bunch of cassette tapes with an unmarked envelope that just said like New York and just sent them to all these people's houses and the cassette said just press play. Well, the people who received the cassettes never gave their addresses to anybody. And one common thing that I saw going around was that they all were members of the Field by Ramen street team, which is weird because Field by Ramen denied their involvement in it. But uh, Harry Styles is tweeting about Transviolet now, so maybe it's like a like a Sony music group thing or I don't know. But it's just weird. It's, you know, it's maybe a little bit of an invasion of, of privacy if you're sending like things to people who don't remember giving you their address. Right. But like, I I don't know. I don't know, but maybe, I don't know. I, I'm kind of just mad that I didn't get a cassette tape. Maybe they'll blow up. Yeah. Well, maybe those cassette tapes will be worth something, so you better keep them. Yeah, you know, and if you're mad about it, then whatever. Um, There's like 14 tours announced this week, <laughs> literally. Let's go through these. <laughs> well, I'm not going, no, we're not going through all of them. <laughs> no, hell no. No, there's not, like, there's maybe two that I would want to go to. I'm going to go to a few of them. Like, I'm going to go see the Wonder Years, Motion City, and State Champs. Yep. I'm a big Motion City soundtrack fan. So big that I anything after my dinosaur life I'm not into. But you'll still go see them. Oh, absolutely! I love them. Seeing state champs again. I feel like I'm always talking about state champs these days. It's always state champs. Yeah. It always comes back to state champs no yeah. matter what's happening. The big rooms that they're about to fill though on that tour. You know, I'm kind of. Like, I think it's weird that not weird, but it doesn't motion. It doesn't. The tour is a little odd to me. Yeah. Mo- Motion City's always torn with weird, weird lineups. So, like, they did a Swellers tour once with this Providence, yeah, right. Like, which was it, weird. Was was and it set, set your goals? goals. Yep. Yeah, that was. I mean, I went to that show and I had a great time, but it was just weird. Same. That was what five, five years, two thousand ten. I feel like I've seen or, Motion City. Soundtrack. I saw them with Metro Station once. Oof. Yeah, that was good. Right. Wow. Yeah, go I on. saw Motion City with Bayside and State Champs. And I didn't go to that show because Anthony Ranieri um wasn't yeah his his girl decided to have a girl so you know he kind of dipped out on the michigan date so i was like <laughs> forget forget this if anthony ranieri is too busy tending to his new child like <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna waste my time were you at that fillmore show which one with saves the day and oh yeah say, say anything. anything yeah yeah that was another good that was a good tour it's like 200 people did did press with say anything that day and a great big pile of leaves 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did I a forget, good acoustic yeah. session. Forget yeah, back with that. my old website that I'm not going to say the name of. But yeah, I mean, so many tours get announced after Warp Tour. It's kind of cool. It's like that, I don't know, like the NBA schedule just got released today. And like, I'm excited about that. More but so like, than. Yeah, but like these 14 tours, maybe I'll go to, maybe I'll go to three of them. What's uh, your third? Um, I I don't know. I'll probably. <laughs> What's your second for starters? Um, <laughs> I'll go to one of them. I'll go to the Back of the Future Hard Store. Neck Deep got announced for that. That's technically an announcement. <laughs> right. I'm, I'll go to that one. I'll go see. Um. I'll go to the UK and see Mayday Parade with the Main. <laughs> Why the hell not? It's just a plane ride. I would go to see Hands Like Houses and I the Mighty. <laughs> oh, man. You want to talk about the iTunes CD thing or not? Nah. Who gives a shit? That's fucking stupid. Who gives a shit? We're already going for a half hour. Jesus. Holy shit, J-Web. Oh, wow. All right, so thanks for sticking around this long. I have been Dan at Yo Decox on Twitter. I have been J-Web at J-Web Music on Twitter. And here is our... Well, my interview with Buddy Nielsen of Senses Fail. Enjoy. Hey. Hey. We good, man? Yeah, all good. All right, good. I was going to say we got uh, police sirens, lost credit cards. This thing's thing's off to a fucking, you know, it's a banger already. Shit. All right, I got Buddy from Senses Fail on the phone right now. How you doing tonight, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Good. So, a lot of, lot of stuff to talk about, obviously. You have been very outspoken in the past couple of weeks in regards to just essentially treating human beings right, primarily in, like, the music scene and everything like that, because there's been a ton of, just a ton of misconduct, I would say, with artists oh. and things like that. Um, one thing that you said is, and I'm just going to get right into it, uh, People in newer and younger bands are extremely uneducated as a proper behavior. What do you kind of attribute that to? I think it's probably just from there not being an older band that are like kind of talking about stuff. Or it, there's like two split scenes. There's like there's there's so much division now, whereas there used to be one big music scene and everyone's sort of like loosely affiliated. There were a lot less bands 10, 15 years ago too because there were a lot less labels and it was also more difficult to be in a band you didn't you couldn't just record on your computer so it took there were less musicians so the scene was also filled with like o- older bands that sort of policed it and and just sort of talked about things on stage that made you know like okay you know if i do these sort of things like people are going to find out and not like what i'm doing you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it, we just don't have that now. Or a lot of the younger bands just don't give a shit. Like, younger bands don't give a shit what I say. They don't look at me as some, like, important figure that they need to, like, listen to. They, they don't care. You know, they're they're like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, he's washed up. You know, who, who, is, who is this guy? Like, who gives a shit what he says? He's just mad because he's not popular. That's the opinion now versus... You know, back in the day when people used to yell at me and put me in check, I'd be like, oh, shit, like, I respect your existence and you being here. Even though, like, disagree with you, I still respect that, like, you know, you've been in a band for 15 years and, like, I I know that you've did no more than me, <laughs> you right. know? Now it's, all- it's like, hey, you know, fuck you. What do you give a shit? What, what, fuck the music scene. Fuck the punk scene. You're not a punk band. We're not a punk band. Who gives a shit? Like, yeah. we're all here to make, you know, it's just a different, it's just a different mentality. And like, it's almost like dues it, aren't being paid anymore. And it's probably because of the fact that becoming a band and getting success or even, you know, what smaller artists would consider success doesn't necessarily happen the way it used to where you are, like I was saying, paying those dues. Yeah, I mean, also the bar was a lot higher. The bar was a lot higher back in the day. You had like this, you had this ability to become ultra successful and sell lots of records and become like a mainstream band. And that, that's not the case now, which is interesting because it, it means that then the music scene has a ceiling on it and then should be really only treated with this sort of like reverence because it's like you're not going anywhere. Like none of these bands are going to make it to like 
a five year mark. The fallout boy did. <laughs> yeah. Or, was... or Par you know, or Paramore or my cam, like they're right. just not because it's just not available. It's not available. The mainstream community isn't interested in what's coming out of the warp tour scene because it's just not relevant for, you know, there maybe Paris and some other stuff that's like legit is going to make it. But some of this other stuff isn't, you know, it's just not. And it's like, you'd think that people would sort of turn around and want to cultivate a music scene in which they, um, you know, it's like, here, this is where we're going to live. We're not going anywhere. But I think a lot of the bands sort of are like, Hey, we're, we don't belong to this. We're trying to go over here. And, um, you kind of get this like useless sort of void for a music scene. You think there's a hardcore music scene. There's still a punk scene. There's the fest scene. There's obviously always going to be the underground hardcore scene. And, and, and that's really like, that's really it. I mean, anybody else, if, you, if you're not a hardcore band, if you're not like a punk band that plays fest, you're really part of this void scene. That's like, there's no real community at all mm -hmm. in any way, shape or form. There's no community. Um, none of the bands represent that. A lot of them have broken up bands that I looked up to. So they're not really around. And there's just not a lot of like bands that really talk about anything anymore or make any statements. Right. And, um, so you really have a void for younger bands going, well, why would I, why would a younger band now take up like any sort of cause when all they've grown up with is a bunch of bands that like never really said anything. So uh -huh. <laughs> I think you just have bands sort of also confused as to like, I mean, every 18 year old in a band is going to make mistakes. I mean, I made a lot of stupid mistakes. None of them involved like, you know, sexually harassing or raping or <clears throat> doing anything ridiculous like this happening but everyone's going to make mistakes because you're a young person young people make mistakes but when you have a community when you have a like a self-policing sort of thing which i think is happening now which people going like yo this is not okay um mm -hmm. i think you're going to have bands sort of have to sort of look at like oh shit like we're in the spotlight i think there's a lot of bands don't recognize that there's an awkward phase when you're in a band where you don't recognize like, Oh, people are listening to us. Like we're not just doing this in the vacuum anymore. Like we have, there's consequences for what we're doing. I mean, that's anybody's adjustment to life when they're like 18, 19, 20 is, Oh, there's consequences for actions. And I mean, I talked about it in another thing. I think a lot of it has to do with the generational thing. Overall, the younger, this younger generation hasn't necessarily had that one sort of tragic um, big event that's defined their generation that's shown them like consequence. Whereas I had 9 11 and you know, my fiance and a lot of my friends went to war, came back, didn't come back, came back, you know, messed up physically, mentally. You saw consequences firsthand at a very young age show. There's consequences to life. Mm -hmm. That is, yes, there, you know, there is this sort of general thing you learn and now. I don't know necessarily if our gen if the younger generation of bands has really had that one enemy and punk without an enemy seems very useless. And that's, I think why you have this genre of what you call the scene or punk kind of missing an enemy or not being able to find who its enemy is. And then you have a lot of music that's like void of any real meaning, but there are plenty of people and plenty of things to, you know, fight for and be about and, I think you have this sort of generation that almost doesn't have an enemy and feels like real apathetic about like, you know, they've grown up with, for the most part, people being generally okay with gay marriage or same sex marriage. And so they find they, you'll find a lot of apathetic. Hey, like when I talk about being queer, they're like, Hey dude, we already got over that. Like, look, like that's, I've grown up my whole life. I'm cool with queer people. Let's stop talking about it. We don't need you to talk about it. Like it's, so you have this weird apathetic thing happening from the fans too, because it's not just the bands. If fans demand bands to be held the camera bowl, it, 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 it's a chicken or the egg type thing. What happens first? Do the fans need to like decide what they want or do the bands decide and the fans follow? I think it's a little bit of both. So you have a bunch of kids mimicking a generation that feels a little bit like without a cause right now. 
You know, right. at least I feel. I feel like there's not a lot of people who have championing some some type of cause. And that's why, like, when I talk about shit, people get so upset because they're like, dude, this is not what music is about. Like, you're not, kids literally are like, dude, we didn't come to see you talk about your personal beliefs. We came to hear you play music. And that's because so many people don't, didn't grow up listening to bands that really said anything. And you're sort of in this new phase where if you do talk about stuff, you're actually, do, you're actually like confusing kids. Cause they're like, what, what the fuck? Like, what is he talking about? Why would I never seen a band talk, talk about important things. Like, mm-hmm. Why would you do that? You're, you're supposed to get up there and play music. You're not supposed to talk about your personal belief. Like, leave that, leave that for your own Twitter. We want that. Put that on your own personal Twitter. Don't mix it in with my band. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's a myriad of reasons, you know, myriad of reasons why things are the way they are. None of which is really anyone's fault. I don't, you know, it's just sort of happenstance is the way things are. Right. And, you know, being from that younger generation myself, I'm 22 years old. I kind of almost never even considered the fact that, you know, my generation, we really don't even you're right about like there's no enemy. There's no there's no cause, anything like that. And that honestly, something that never even crossed my mind. And, you know, it it, very eye opening and a very unique perspective that people should take note of something that comes along. Right. You know, there will be. There'll be some tragedy that defines your generation. I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, unfortunately, it's sort of like there is that tragedy. I mean, the thing is, like, if I was 22 years old, I'd go, why the fuck, when I go to a movie, do I think about getting shot? Like, what the fuck is wrong with my country, my generation, that I literally can't go to a movie without thinking that I'm going to be fucking killed? Like, that is an enemy. Like, that fear, that, like violent world in which we live in is something to sort of go, Hey, the answer to that question is so multifaceted that it's not easy. It's not like, Oh, fuck president Bush or fuck the war in Iraq or, you know, fuck Reagan or all the, you know, very different degrees that every other generation's had. There's, there's it, the things in this generation are so like cumulative of other deeper, ridiculous, deep seated problems that mm-hmm. can't be fixed with just like, Hey, we're all going to get together and fucking yell about it. No, it's like it, it, you can't just get up on stage and talk about gun violence. Right. And and change it. Like it's so deep and so many aspects that that's why it's untouchable. That's why it's something that people don't even talk about because it's like how do we change American culture of gun and the way in which people are dealing with mental illness in this country? That's like so multifaceted and has so many levels of need but like there's so many causes for 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 younger generation it's just it's not so simple as there isn't that fucking one figurehead and it's like if you're not careful there's gonna be you know if you're not careful donald trump is gonna be the fucking president and then you'll have a (laughs) then you'll have an enemy there you go and then maybe that's what we need you know (laughs) just have an enemy well i also think that the reason all this sexual stuff is happening one is because the internet i mean it's just it's so it's so you're able to just sort of go right online and sort of put yourself out there and get into a sexual situation. Right. I think also one of the other things is, is that at least when I was, you know, when I was growing up, we were taught that if you have unprotected sex, you're going to get AIDS and you're going to die. And that was sort of the call in the nineties for all of sexual education was, yo, if you get, if you have unprotected sex, you will get AIDS and you will die. Mm-hmm. And that led to conversations about sex happening. And I think like, a, even though it didn't obviously stop people from having sex, I think it implanted something in me to at least take having sex with other people. I'm, I, I just had a, a caution about it. Right. I just had this caution of like, like you have to be at least, cautious it's there's something in there and i think with that caution comes a pause comes a little bit of like questioning and changes the way in which people are maybe interacting Mm -hmm. maybe not maybe that's not the case but i am i mean from my standpoint i definitely treated sex with a little bit more caution 
Right. Um, I wasn't so eager to just like, I feel like right now people aren't that conversation of HIV. I mean, you've, you've seen magic Johnson. He's been able to live a, a most people, their idea of HIV isn't this death sentence like it was for me growing up. I think, you know, if you're 21 years old, you're like, dude, I mean, even if I get AIDS, I can live. Right. You know, so it's, it's not this death sentence. And I think that changes the way in which people function with sex, because when you don't feel like sex is this fucking like thing. Killer. Yeah, it's like, I, I think too, I mean, we also live in this culture of like, you know, dating apps and things like that, where it's so accessible to just, I mean, there are things designed specifically for just getting it in and, you know, carrying on. And with this generation as mm-hmm. well, I feel like we kind of lack those social skills of, you know, not not only just like conversations with one another or no like for like me personally i suck at being social like you put me in a social situation i don't know what the fuck i'm doing and that's because i spend a lot of time online and, and doing things like that you almost don't realize like the weight of actions because the weight of words online are so light it, it doesn't mean anything mm-hmm. if you're if you're texting somebody and you're asking them for a twerk video that doesn't mean anything to you because you're not physically there doing it and then you don't see how wrong and fucked up it actually is you know, when you're when you're when it's so easy to just send a picture of your dick to somebody, you don't think well, back in the day, would you go up and fl- just flash somebody your dick? It, it's just such a such a new culture that the waters really haven't been tested with it. We don't really know where what we're doing with it either. And, you know, without anybody mm-hmm. kind of looking over it or overseeing what what the precautions are or, you know, what what we should do to prevent situations like front porch step or, or whatever. We're, we're screwed, essentially. And, you know, you, we look at, you're looking at it from so many different facets and things like that, and there's so many that we don't even know. It's so integrated and, and so deep-rooted that, you know, when, when Kevin Lyman's out there tweeting, what do you suggest we do to, to improve the safety of the warp scene? What ideas do you have? How can you even answer that question? I, 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 I put it on the bands, because the bands are the ones that directly dictate the conversations that are happening. And when you have bands that aren't talking about things, you're not going to change conversations. Like Kevin Lyman isn't in charge of what the bands are putting out there and what people, he's just a reflection. All he's doing is putting what people find popular up there. Like he's really, now I'm not, I'm not taking any, of course he's made mistakes and he's done things that obviously aren't helpful to what is, happening but again like i think that you, if you're going to be upset at anybody you have to be upset at the band and you have to be upset at the labels and you have to be upset at the managers the people that are really like you know, kevin lyman promotes shows with bands that are popular he doesn't decide or fund to you know make a band popular he puts them on the tour he wouldn't put them on the tour if they weren't popular you know what i mean so right. it's like the band is almost already like established and there of course he could reward different bands and that's something that like i mean i know at least from talking to him he's told me like you know next year's gonna be very different there's not gonna be as many young bands because he thinks you know there needs to be some bands out there that are helping further a conversation or have some content behind them <clears throat> and um that's what's gonna help change things i mean we also i think it's this is a culmination of <clears throat> excuse me many years of this i mean this isn't just systemic of what's happening right now. This is the, the way it's been for years. Uh-huh. I think since you had a lot of bands sort of bow out and you sort of lost the real punk aspect to the music scene and the real talking about current <clears throat> affairs and really having conversations after all the bands got really big in the mid 2000s, you sort of, they spawned second generation bands, which those bands weren't having those conversations. So, you've had about seven or eight years where no one's been having these conversations and this is the result. It's, I don't think it's so much like what is going on. I'm like, this has been going on. I mean, I've seen this. I mean, if anybody's ever followed census fail, you've heard me talk about like what just, just how I thought it was dangerous to have all these bands in this music scene that don't stand for anything. Don't care about shit. Cause then you're going to get a music scene filled with what it's filled with right now, you know, which is, you know, people that aren't necessarily interested in being a part of a community 
that's doing something meaningful. They're sort of here to make music and or serve some other purpose, or there's not a real community aspect. Um, you've kind of lost that. And like I said, unless you're in hardcore or unless you're kind of in a fasty sort of, you know, punk, punk band, mm-hmm. um, you know, but, you know, for the warp Tour scene, which once had, which was once was made up of punk bands, um, you know, you've kind of had this different music that doesn't really feel like it's necessarily interested in having those type of conversations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it, this is a result of music being made without sort of without any having, heart. Without any heart, man. I mean, d- d- just I mean, there, there's generally some of, speaking, you know, I mean, there's bands out there. There's bands out there that are doing things. Obviously, they're talking from their heart. They're, they're, they're meaningful. But I think it's just nobody wants to have, nobody wants to put their foot out, put their neck out and say anything because it's like the backlash is so much. I mean, I, we've lost so many fans in the last year just by me being more vocal about women's rights and LGBTQ rights and animal rights. And, you know, everybody, you know, there's a lot of people that want me to just shut up. And there's a lot of people that care and are interested, but there's also a lot of people that are like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, why would you sabotage? Like, I don't like your band for this reason. I like you for your music. I don't care about this. But for me, it's important enough that I don't care if we lose fans, but it's like, you can't ask every band to do that because honestly, I don't expect people to want to do that i don't expect people to want to put their neck out there so it's like you just have a delicate situation where it's just going to take some bands deciding like you know the wonder years taking more of like a stance on things and with their new record you know i think you'll see some bands step up and then that'll hopefully influence younger bands to start and do different you know have a have a message because really it's about influencing young people to start bands to talk about things. It's not mm-hmm. so much about changing the bands and the music scene right now, because honestly, like I don't really expect to win anybody over with what I'm saying or sort of influence anyone in the music scene because yeah, I just sort of think <laughs> that is um, unrealistic mm-hmm. and that uh, it's more about influencing younger people to start bands, to care about this and also to let, people who buy the music and our consumers know like, Hey, like this is important and you should want bands to be the leaders of this. It's not up to the fucking, it's really not up to anyone else. It's sort of a, it, the whole music scene is totally based on a fan on a con on a, like a, a person and the band sort of interacting and deciding that, you know, I believe in what you're doing and I'm going to, pay you for your services so it's about influencing the you know the people who make up the consumer i mean i hate to use it in that term that like bands need to have meaning or we're just not going to support you and then that's sort of that's sort of like the big that's what's going to change things you know not necessarily talking about things online unfortunately it's like that will help but it's really going to come down to people deciding like, yeah, I don't want to support bands that don't say anything. No, but I think, I think on some level people are listening to music for different reasons. Now I think a lot of people are listening to music more, more as like a a distraction rather than necessarily like an engagement into some community. Um, Cause I, I just feel like a lot of what's popular right now is not so much, you know, not so much, not substance, but it's just like, if you just look at like the EDM stuff and like what is supremely like pop music, it's, n- it's not necessarily, you know, I-, I hate to sound old, but it's like when I was growing up, it was like Rage Against the Machine and you had people having, you know, these conversations that were in giant fucking bands, even System mm-hmm. of a Down, you know, like these bands were politically based bands who were the biggest bands in music. And so that filters down to someone like me who grows up you know, whose parents listened to classic rock, who was all based upon that. And then you have me listening to political punk. So I've been heavily influenced by having some, some say, some voice. And then you have, you know, a younger generation who kind of missed that for the last eight years. And I think this is the result. You have a bunch of people who are involved in music who don't necessarily feel like 
this music is really supposed to be anything other than just like sort of a distraction. Uh huh. I I um when you, when you said that you losing fans over speaking out against these issues, I've experienced that myself when it comes to just like the website's Twitter. Like if I tweet a, about a band member or somebody doing something that's messed up and kind of put them on blast for it, all of a sudden all these people are are against me and and saying that I'm just starting shit and you know what I mean kind of blaming me for for speaking out against it. It's just it's just an odd thing to to think like yo like this guy's a pedophile. Like, what? like I'm, I'm telling you that this person's a pedophile and that you should stay clear of him and you're getting mad at me for it. I just, I don't understand that aspect of it. I think a lot of people are afraid of getting information that is kind of complex like that. Like, if it's not simple, like you're saying, like, nobody really has much substance or they're not standing for anything. Once you start standing for something, you make people or you force them to start thinking. And when you force people to start thinking... Sometimes they may back away from it and and just be scared of the fact that things aren't as easy as they appear to be, and it it's just I don't I I don't know what to do about that myself, but you know things that you've said and in, in in everything it's just bringing a lot of light to to all of these issues. Um, what bands have you kind of have you had any? issues with any of the bands on warp tour where there's any sort of like tension because you're speaking out against them or anything like that no i mean i don't really speak out against anybody i mean the only band that i really like feel is doing a great disservice to <clears throat> the youth or the world is, is is someone like attila so that's the only one that i feel like actively like you know needs to be sort of regarded as like hey like there needs to be a counterpoint to what they're doing which is fair which i think makes sense because it's, it's just like anything in this country there there deserves to be a counterpoint like he can get up there and do whatever he wants and the band can do whatever they want but i should be entitled to be able to say no i don't agree with that i mean that's just how our country works that's how it discourse should work um you know right um is there any kind of since you're speaking out against them is it does it ever get clicky where you know oh you're talking shit about my friends or anything like that or do you deal no, with any of that i mean generally generally nobody wants to be involved in it i mean Sometimes people will say something anonymous, like, hey, man, I really appreciate that. But, like, generally, nobody has my back. I mean, you know, I, yeah. mean, I, I feel pretty much, like, alone, honestly. I feel like some people have my back. But I think generally, for the most part, people find it to be like, all right, dude, like, we get it. You don't like that he says faggot, but whatever. You know, like, he seems like a nice guy. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, and I understand. But it's like, for me, it's really important. For me, it's really important because I work, you know, I'm closely trying to cultivate groups where we're meeting with young LGBTQ people and sort of having discussion groups and making, trying to make safe spaces for them, which don't exist in the music scene, which didn't exist for me. And you have this person doing this. And it's like, I feel, no, I didn't say anything for the first half of tour really because I, you know, I, I just sort of put it out of my head. I said something to him. We had a conversation. It didn't go the way I wanted to. And I just sort of was like, you know what? I just need to like, except that this guy's just going to be doing what he's doing and, and I'll do what I do. And, but then I started having these meet up meetups with punk out and I, you know, these, these guys and girls came and I sort of heard like, you know, what they were saying and they wanted to talk about it. And I'm like, well, you know, if these be, this is important to them, it needs to be important to me. And I need to use my position in a band and as one of the only, you know, non straight people on the tour in a band other than a couple other people, like then I'm going to talk about it. Like I want to talk about it. I want to let people know that it's not okay and that it's not safe and that there are people in the crowd that don't like this message. And Mm -hmm. that it's also educating younger people like that. This isn't okay. Like you can't take what this guy is saying and bring this into a safe place and start calling people faggots. Like, because that's what he's telling you. You can't, I'm telling you, you can't do that. Like, that's not actually the way in which the world works. Mm-hmm. Um, so I felt it's sort of a duty to be like, you know what? I need to say something. I need to say like, it's not okay. And that it shouldn't be condoned. And, you know, I mean, I know people have my back. I mean, I know they do, but it's just, it sort of feels like I'm the only one willing to say something because it's like, I don't know, you know, I, I'm yeah. not really sure why, but you know, obviously there's some, you know, like Lee Corey Oswald and fucking Koji and, and Gray Gordon and pup and you know there are bands out there that obviously have my back but like for the most part i feel overall everybody's just kind of like yeah that's 
let Buddy deal with that thing. That's his thing. You know, he's he's not straight, so he can. That's his champion. That cause, man. You know, yeah. and it's like it feels a little shitty. Honestly, I would say that I would have. It would be nice to have people sort of be like, you know what, fuck. You know, obviously the Wonder Years, obviously talked about it as well, and I think it's something that needs to be said. Uh, I think it's kind of ridiculous that it needs to be said, but it, it has to be said because clearly people are uneducated about the word its origins, its history, and the way in which it affects people and also teaches people to continue to marginalize groups of people who are fighting for still their right to be seen, heard, and safe and respected. So, you know, I think it's super important, but I don't also, I can't expect everybody to find it as important as me, you know, and I'm realistic about that. So I don't, I don't sit around and go, hey, what the fuck, man? Why aren't you got my back? Like, why aren't you saying anything on stage? I don't do that because honestly, I've also learned that if you're an activist, you can't expect everybody to be an activist because it's just not everybody's calling. And being an activist means that you put yourself in a situation where you're going to get, you're going to get it from all sides. Mm-hmm. You know, in are thinking that you're not doing a good enough job or why don't you do it this way? Or, you know, who are you to talk about this? You, we don't want you as our spokesperson. So you get it from the from the side you're on and then you get it from the opposition and then you get it from the people in the middle that just don't want to hear it. So you really, op- you really have to be really comfortable. And I understand why bands don't talk about things because you have to be super comfortable with who you are and the ability to take criticism. Yeah, and that's, I think one reason why bands don't talk so much because the internet exists. And back in the day, you could get up on stage and say something and never hear any sort of contradictory point or backlash or aggression towards what you're saying. You know, generally, it's like I get up on stage, I say this, and I, and I, I sort of am able to exist in a place that feels safe. But with the Internet, you have people calling you a fucking faggot, telling you they want to kill you, telling you that you're a fucking idiot, you know, telling and you're like, yo, you start to say, like, did I do something wrong? Like, all I said was, don't call, don't use the word faggot. Or all I said was, like, you know, one in three women get and one in six men are sexually assaulted or abused or, or raped in this country. Like, she starts to second guess it, go, whoa, man, maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. So it's a really difficult situation that you have to, like, feel out and be okay with being in. And, and that's why I don't think a lot of bands talk about it, too, even though even some of them feel that way. They're just like, hey, it's just, God, opening yourself up to it is super sketchy and scary because you, it's not just, like, you don't get to just have conversations with people to their face. People are just coming at you online. And that's a really, like... You know, I think for younger people that have difficulty turning off that world, it can become very difficult to be like, okay, how am I supposed to like promote my band? So much of what I do for my music is online. Like I have to like keep the peace here or else I'm going to start getting shit on by people that that don't agree with my point. And so it's a very delicate balance. And so I, I don't sit around and, be like hey what the fuck like why don't you guys help me out like don't you agree that like you shouldn't use the word faggot or like don't you agree in this and i think people agree i think people do but it's just it's not their calling to speak out and that's why i think it's so important for bands that do care to do it to try to sort of interest the audience in like yeah you know what i i like when people talk about this shit like i think it's important and then you'll have bands go okay we'll try it out. Like, I agree with this. Like, let's, let's talk about this, you know, mm-hmm. because when there's another war, which there's going to be, cause we're America, you know, there's going to be, an, there's going to be a need for bands to sort of like step up and say, Hey, like this is fucked up. You yeah. know, this is musicians are always ones that need to be the voice of some sort of reason within our culture. And right now we, <laughs> we kind of don't have that. You know, we're kind of like, we're missing a lot of those people that haven't spoken up about all of the shit that's happened with cops and and black people in this country over the last, what, I mean, hundreds of years. But recently, it's sort of really been thrust into the limelight. And you just, you know, it's a musician's duty to sort of take stock of what's going on and to write about it and to verbalize it. I think that's your duty as a musician. Other people would disagree. Um, but I think it's about empowering people to like, feel like that is your job. 
rather mm-hmm. than discouraging people, you know? Right. No, man, it, you're, you're absolutely just hitting everything right on the head. And I, I don't know. I'm just kind of taken back by the fact that like you, you're, you're so like aware of all of this and, you know, speaking about in order to have a stance, you have to be comfortable with who you are. That's something that I never even considered before. And I'm sure that a lot of listeners to this maybe haven't considered either. And you're not wrong at all when it comes to that. Um, in the past, you, you've stated that you, you suffered with sex addiction. Are you more forgiving when an artist like From Porch Step comes out and says that everything he did was due to his sex addiction? Are you more critical of that or more understanding of that? I mean, every, every, anybody that's doing anything wrong is in some way flawed or influenced by, I mean, nobody is separate from conditional effects. You know, everybody is making decisions based upon the information they were given. So it's like a twofold thing where you have to keep the person responsible for their actions, but you also have to have some level of, you know, and this is where people get super pissed off with me is because I'm, I'm a Buddhist and I believe that really you want to meet everything with some level of compassion and understanding that like you, know, the, 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 the things you did need to be accounted for, but me coming at you with aggression isn't going to change any situation. And it's also not going to help me because mm-hmm. I don't feel better when I come at people with aggression. That doesn't make my life easier. It actually makes my life more difficult because I'm carrying around these emotions of hostileness. And so it's like, I don't necessarily, I don't identify with what he's done in any way, shape or form. You know, my addiction was completely different. I don't know his addiction. I wouldn't put them nearly in the same ballpark, but I can understand why people do things that don't make sense. Because as an addict, as anybody who's been an addict knows the addictive mind is not rational. I mean, rationally, drinking and putting yourself in situations where you could be get diseases or severely like acquire, you know, complications or, or ruin relationships or your band, like the, the addictive mind and anyone who's been an addict or anyone who's currently an addict knows this. And mm-hmm. it's, it's not, none of it makes any sense. So on the one hand, I could totally understand that what our country lacks and our community lacks is any sort of ability to successfully deal with people's neurosis and or mental illnesses. We have like a serious lack of understanding of what it is and how to fix it, not to medicate it, but to really diagnose what is happening and intervene. Mm-hmm. and change the behavior, not so much just give pills. And we're right now in like reactionary phase where we go, oh, this guy had a gun and he killed a bunch of people in a movie theater. Okay, what, what's the problem? Oh, he was mentally ill. Okay, well, how come nobody recognized this? Where is our support system? Where is, you know, and a lot of our country suffers from this. I, I'm not responsible for other people's actions but mm-hmm. you are in some way, shape or form. I'm not saying that I'm responsible for poor steps actions in any way, but I'm saying that, you no, know, as one, his community, his label, his, you know, his booking agent, his manager, all these people had opportunities to be part of recognizing that this person has some sort of need for help. And, you know, in our country, we just don't have a lot of people that are well versed in dealing with those sort of situations. I mean, a lot of we're still very young at understanding the ways in which to treat mental illness. And I even say neurosis as like a, you know, because I, I don't, a lot of people don't make a distinction between mental illness and sort of addictive behavior, addictive patterns, neurosis, the other various forms. Like for me, my thing was not a chemical imbalance. My thing is based upon uh, basically trauma and the dissociative disorder, which is not necessarily chemically based at all. Like it's psychosomatic Mm -hmm. and has to do with the sympathetic nervous system, but has nothing to do with the chemical imbalance. So, you know, my mental illness isn't even necessarily a mental illness and can't really be treated with medication in any way, shape or form. It can be covered up, 
but it, it's not treated in that way. And we don't have an ability in our country to have that net for people that are experiencing these type of things. We're just not equipped for it. We just don't have, we, we, one, we don't have the compassion. We don't have the understanding that like our weakest links of society are really only as far as we're ever going to get because it's where it's 2015 and we have people who are killing each other in movie theaters, you know, and I still don't have an answer for why there's been nothing done. My whole life has been based upon people with guns killing other people. And I don't have an answer. No one has an answer. And no one's effectively really started to even attempt to discuss what the issue is. And the issue is so deeply seated in our lack of community and lack of like ability to look out for one another that it, it really is up to other people. You know, it really is up to other people sort of creating a world in which we look after people that are having you know, cause there, at various times in my life, like I could have killed myself. I could have, you know, I don't know, been driven to fucking hurt other people. Not in maybe, you know, I, I, my, my thing was to hurt people emotionally, but you know, other people hurt people physically because of their neurosis because of, of their addictive patterns. And it's like, the conversation is just like, no one's having it because I don't think people know the breadth of the problem, just how widespread our, inability to be present for what's happening in our lives is, I mean, we've, as a culture are so filled with distraction that so many of us fall through the cracks. And I would say people like from Port steps, people that do these things are people that fell through the cracks and are responsible for their own behavior. Cause I know I'm going to get shit on for sort of saying that this is other people's responsibility. But if you just keep passing the bill down the line from generation to generation, somebody's going to have to pick it up just like with climate change. Just keep passing it on down. Just fucking pass it on down, pass mm -hmm. it on down. And someone's going to get stuck with the fucking bill. And I think what's happening is our generation, this world is getting stuck with the bill of sort of never really looking at what is really going on on a level of why people are doing this. I mean, one reason is family. We have no fucking family system. I grew up in a broken family. Everybody I know grew up in some sort of sort of broken, disturbed sort of situation that really leads to not okay people, not well-adjusted people, not people that are like compassionate, not people that are understanding, people that have a lot of baggage and nowhere to put it. And that has to be looked at. So there needs to be more people that give a shit about the overall problem and less people that want to, because yeah, you, you fuck front porch steps. He shouldn't be allowed to make music. His privilege should be revoked and he should have to fucking real recognize his job is to recognize his addictive patterns, what he did and the consequences of his actions and why he is where he is. Cause that's his job as someone who clearly is sort of doing inappropriate behavior probably stemmed from having to cover up some level of, you know, hurt that's there and having no functional way to do it. I mean, when you have this level of pain and this sadness and this anger and you have no fucking tools, our country is very good at giving you guns and alcohol and drugs and prescription pills and therapists that'll just fucking pass you on down the line. I mean, I've been in it. So it's like, he's responsible for waking up to his actions that got him to where he is. And I think everybody else is responsible for holding everybody else accountable for this because that's the only way it's going to change. And if you don't want to do that, then you're not, you're going to have a music scene in a country that's filled with rapists and sexists and homophobes and gun toting nationalists that don't give a fuck about anybody but themselves. So mm -hmm. it seems daunting as fuck, but it's like, if, if you don't, if you don't have people that are willing to like, and it, the change is just literally, I think, letting people know that faggot's not okay. Letting people know that there's a culture of rape. Letting people know what it's like to not be privileged. You know, like, this is where it starts. Mm -hmm. 
And if you, that's what you can do. It's just letting people know that like, it's not okay. And then you'll start to cultivate maybe a world in which young people have grown up knowing that these things aren't okay and that these things are real and that they're meaningful and that we change it through culture because that's the only way it changes. That's the only way anything changes is it becomes culturally unacceptable. It's culturally unacceptable to not have um, same-sex marriage. And, and look what happened. It's culturally unacceptable to do these things. And the people that don't agree will die and it will literally filter itself out. I mean, it's literally, that's the way it has to go. That's the way it is you know, even with racism, people have to recognize that you're racist, whether you want to be or choose to be or not, because of all the shit you've been fed your entire life. You know, all the gang movies you've watched, all the stuff that you've been fed by MTV, regardless of whether all the stereotypes you've been put into your head by the media, by music, it's not your fault. No one's asking you as a white man to be attacked. No one's telling you, no one's attacking you. Anybody, and all from a standpoint of being a white man and reckon, having to recognize this and deal with this shame of like, oh, I should be shameful. But it's like, no one wants you to be shameful. They just want you to care and go, you're right. It's fucking a lot easier to be white and a man and straight. And even then it's fucking difficult to be alive because we're all sharing the same experience, which is spinning around on a rock for no fucking apparent reason. And we're all trying to figure out why it feels as though life is completely meaningless. And at the same time, the most amazing, beautiful thing. It's like this, the biggest contradiction of everything. And we're all sharing in that experience. So some of us have that experience easier and some of us have that fucking so hard. Mm -hmm. And it's about sort of recognizing that there's a common existence and that being the focal point of trying to change people's opinion on why you shouldn't just, you know, do the things that <laughs> the fucking mad things that people do in this world. So that's a really elongated answer to sort of front porch steps things. But it's like, I, I, I can't really talk about it correctly without talking about the overall picture, because it's not just that, like, it's not just he did this thing. I mean, I guarantee you at some point in his life, there was probably some level that he was hurt in a way that most people that have been sexually abused, sexually abused. So I think anytime there is that to pretend that that's not part of the story is ignorant and not helpful because people from destructive behavior is to allow them to have some level of safety. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but when you look at programs in jail and you look at the way that they work inmates through and they're supposed to rehab them, the ones that do get rehabbed are the ones that are, 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 are basically shown some level of compassion, not the ones that are locked away and beat up, you know? Mm -hmm. And that also, that also takes the willingness of the accused of the person who's done the bad things to say, I fucked up. I'm at fault and I want to know what I can do to change how, did, how I got here. I want to change how I got here and I want to make amends. So it's, it's, it's not a simple fucking answer. It's not just fucking kill him and hang him and throw him away. I don't think he should be a part of this music thing. I don't think he should be touring. I think that he should do the things necessary in his life to live a good, healthy, nice life. I think he's allowed to have that. I, I don't think he should be killed. I don't think he should. I don't think that that solves anything. I think what, what would help our world is to help him and then have him be empowered to go and help other people just like I was. Because if nobody gave a fuck about me, if everybody wrote me off and I fucking delved and threw, you know, down to the, the fucking abyss, I wouldn't be here to be talking about this. So it's, 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 it's as much as, you know, in our culture, we really want to punish the people for their sins. There has to be some level of forgiveness if that person shows 
they have a propensity to change and or willingness. And if not, fuck them. That's their karma. That's their decision. And, you know, he's sort of shown that he's not willing to do that. So on some level, it's, it's disheartening to see him not sort of be like, dude, I fucked up. I, I need to figure out why I am like this. And when you can start to do that, you can start to change. But if you never, if you never want to be, and that's just like addicts 101, 12 step program, anybody getting clean is being responsible for your actions, no matter what you, you know, part of this process is sort of making amends. One of the you know, steps is making amends and people be wrong. But one of the first is sort of just admitting that you have a fucking problem. You know, <laughs> I mean, right. that's like 101 addiction stuff. And, 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 and a lot of times, that's nobody. A lot of times people just don't even get to that step. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate. And that's not anyone else's fault. That's, that's personal sort of karma and their decision. And, you know, it's unfortunate when that doesn't happen, but that's sort of how I feel about the whole front porch step thing, because it's, I do, you know, a lot of people say I haven't talked about it, but it doesn't mean I don't think about it. You know, I think about it a lot. I just don't, I don't have a forum in which to voice, an elongated answer like this that's appropriate because I'm not willing to put it online because I don't think, I think you have to hear the emotion in my voice to understand what I'm talking about. You can't just take it online and have this voiceless sort of opinion about something that is so intimate and meaningful. Uh, that's why I don't necessarily like write about it online or tweet about it. You know, people are like, you know, he doesn't talk about it or, or he doesn't talk about his label. Like, you know, the thing with pure noise is like, I truly believe that Jake Round is a stand up human being. And I, if I didn't believe that, if I didn't think that he was doing the right thing, which he made mistakes handling the front porch steps thing because he had no previous understanding of how to deal with a situation like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think he dealt with the no good news thing in a way that also wasn't well done. I think that whole thing was botched by everybody involved. And it's just like, I also can't insert myself into every single thing that happens because I don't have the energy to do that because there is so much to worry about. There's fucking, the oceans are becoming acidic and all the coral reefs are disappearing. And it just, for me, I can only take so much on at a time. And that's sometimes why I, I won't talk about something because it's like, I, I honestly don't have the mental capacity to tackle this as well. Since I unfortunately need to like have some level of um, resiliency because if, if I sit around and just look at my Twitter feed, I will kill myself, you know, because it's like, see, so the lions get, white dentist is killing endangered species. And then there's 15, 17 idiots debating garbage today on CNN and the plane is still missing. And, you know, you get completely overwhelmed. And I find myself in situations specifically with what happened with the front porch steps and the no good news thing. I was completely overwhelmed and I, I, I couldn't process it. And rather than sort of forcing myself and burning myself out, I wanted to sort of deal with it in a way that I thought was useful to me because I'm a human being. I'm need some, ability to not necessarily be what everybody else wants me to be. And I think that's why so many bands don't speak out is because once you do speak out, because there's so few people, you are sort of required then to sort of be the mouthpiece for everything. And that's necessarily not what anybody really wants and, or that's really not anybody else's job. I think the things that I choose to speak about are, 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 I can only speak to the things that I feel most passionate about. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's so many things that it's like difficult to develop an opinion, mentally decide where you feel about it, to investigate it, to figure it out. And then to sort of reiterate that into the public, knowing you're going to get the shit beat out of you from all sides. So it's like, you have to be very, you have to, I have to pick and choose. Cause also I don't want to waste my voice. Like I don't want to be yelling about sea turtles in Antarctica. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. people are going to be like, dude, everything is your cause. 
and they'll and I'll totally lose my ability to sort of have any sort of resonance with people who aren't interested in what I'm saying. You know, I have to like really pick and choose. And that's why I'm also super careful about what I do talk about, because I think there's some level of burning myself out and then also burning people out because they're like, dude, every week you, you give a shit about this. Now you give a shit about that. Now you're yelling at me about this. I have to really cultivate. And I'm also learning how to do it too. So Mm -hmm. I ask people to be patient with me as I learn how to sort of talk about sensitive subjects in a larger forum. Cause that's a learning experience for me to know like what I can handle, what people want from me, what people need to hear, what needs to be said. I think it's more important to figure out what doesn't need to be said. Cause that's really the most important thing is what, what filtering it down to really what the most important points and, and what the most important relevant things are that need to be said rather than sort of jumping on every cause, because that's not going to, that's not going to change anything. Well, I, I, and, and that's a lot to take in and you know, you, I think that you need to go on like a, like a spoken word tour or something like that. Just to fucking <laughs> talk to people, man. Like I'm, I'm not even joking you right now, man. Like this conversation for me, I mean, I'm not going to post this for like another week or so, but this is just like, I mean, hitting me in, in so many places that are just so eye opening and, and your perspective is honestly just so far above the normal person and even just in the music industry, just light years beyond that. It's just, it, it, it's, I mean, the only, the only reason why I'm able to talk about this is because I experienced it because I literally went through periods of my life that were so destructive uh-huh. and embarrassing and shameful and scary and depressing and violent that like, and I found a way to like literally deal with that. And so I want and need, my goal is to try to convey to people that there is, I don't want to even say hope because it has nothing to do with hope because it's all about personal action. It really isn't, I don't leave it up to hope. I don't leave it up to prayer. It's just all about really, there is a way to to be less in pain and less suffering. And if I can sort of help people, just one person with that, then I, that I, you know, it's somebody that I didn't have. Mm-hmm. And that's like the whole point. Whereas people think I'm doing this to gain fans. Like I'm going to, this is the rest of my life. I'm not, you know, music is become a part. Music is now the vehicle in which I talk about this. Right. When music goes away, I will continue to talk about this in different circles and other places and to, continue to sort of look into what, who I am and how I became this way so that I can help other people and pull them through. And, um, you know, I appreciate it and thank you. And I mean, you know, I, sometimes I, I don't know what I'm saying. I just sort of just, <laughs> yeah, just no, you just let it, you let it out, I, man. I trust, yeah. I just trust, I trust in that my body and that my experience to be conveyed in a way that makes sense to other people the less I just, the less I think about it and the more that I just sort of let it flow. And, and so I appreciate you giving me, because I like to talk about this because I want people to know that there are people that have suffered massively and are able to come back into the world, contribute to society, help people, save people, make changes, and, and above all, feel secure and happy and healthy and that it is a thing and you can do it without drugs it, it just takes, I think it really just takes at first developing some level of compassion towards your own suffering and pain. And that's something that's completely adverse to our culture. And that's what I think is really a problem and a root of a lot of this is that we have no, you know, we have no love for ourselves because we're never taught that. We're always taught that we need to fix what we are, change what we are develop what we are, succeed in a way to be better than what we are. No one ever tells you there's nothing wrong with you. And, and that's the message that was given to me. And that's what changed my life. As, 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 you know, as simple as that sounds, when I started to recognize that there's nothing wrong with me, that what's wrong with me is my relationship to my thoughts 
and my relationship to what's occurring in my life. Not necessarily that any specific thing is wrong. There's bad things I do and wrong actions and wrong speech and wrong things I do. But the idea that I'm somehow flawed from birth, I think is a, is a really gross way to go living your life. And we have, you know, mostly our entire religious Judeo Christian uh, existence is based on that, that you're flawed from birth. So, you know, I, uh, I appreciate you giving me the time and I hope that, you know, I can continue to talk about stuff and hopefully inspire other people to care about what it comes down to is like trying to inspire people to care about themselves and other people because that's what's going to change things. Mm -hmm. None of the other, none of the other ways work or have worked because they're clearly not working right now. On a, on a light, lighthearted note, I, I think it's, it's safe to, uh, Don, don the moniker upon you, the voice of the voiceless. A little CM Punk reference right there. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I know that you're a wrestling fan and wrestling is like yeah. number one in my life. So honestly, oh, that's awesome. yeah, man, it's just, uh, you know, last question. Who's your favorite wrestler? Oh, man. Right now, I'm going to say Seth Rollins because he's, he's a Sense of Fail fan. Good. So. There you go. He's a fan of you. Uh, that's <laughs> He's a fan of Sense of Fail. So that's but I like Bray Wyatt a lot, too. Oh man, get on the mic! I, I would imagine if you were a wrestler, you'd be a you'd be a promo guy after after. I'd love, that, oh, I'd love man. it. Yeah, I, maybe that, in another life. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> or you know, you're not. It, it's never too late. You know, people can jump in there. I don't know, <laughs> man. I'm just saying. I could be a manager, maybe. I could be a manager. There you go. Be, no, be, be an advocate is what you need to be. Oh, I'll be an advocate. Yeah, be, I an, be advocate. an advocate. There you go. But honestly, yeah. buddy, man, thank you so much for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. You again are great and i don't need to tell you that fucking everybody listen to his <laughs> words they're honestly just fucking or, listen. Know, or don't or, i mean or eh. don't or find I mean, your own voice yeah. is, you, you don't you don't have to agree with me yeah. i'm not asking for anyone to just agree with me i'm just asking for people to take into consideration that like what i've talked about should be at least entertained right you know yeah you can disagree with me all you want just do it in a way that's respectful and causes some level of like educated discourse rather than just saying that things like male privilege don't exist. Like a lot of people just don't want to see the reality. And that's one of the biggest problems is people are just, they're just not aware enough to see the reality of where, where they're living. And that's what causes so much of the problems and pain and suffering is lack of awareness. So, but mm -hmm. I, you don't have to agree with me. I'm not trying to get everybody to agree with me. I'm trying to get people to stop making, stop hurting so many people. Yeah. Because what I'm advocating for is the opposite of that. And mm -hmm. that if you can jump on board with that, maybe you have a different idea of how to go about that, but that's the overall idea. It's trying to find ways in which our society can sort of heal and not continue a path towards fucking destruction. Well, there you have it. The voice of the voiceless, Buddy Nielsen. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for your time. And let's do it again sometime, all right? Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you so much for listening to the whole thing. I realized that that was like an hour and a half of your life that you just invested into this podcast. I think that it was well worth it, though. Buddy has a lot of great insight, um, has a lot of knowledge to offer younger bands in the scene and fans and i really hope that he does some sort of spoken word tour because i would definitely attend it i wasn't joking when i said that and he no. truly is the voice of the voiceless um whether or not it's a cm punk reference or not is irrelevant but um i really meant it when i said it to him and i enjoyed doing that interview with him and i think that it's probably it's up there with my all-time faves um if you enjoyed this podcast though do you enjoy j-web I enjoyed it. That's good. Then maybe, just maybe, you'll go back and listen to all of our other podcasts. I already did it. I already listened to all of them. No, you didn't. You're lying. No, I didn't. We have interviews with State Champs. Yep. They're a big name. Mm-hmm. Neck Deep. Uh, yep. Bless the Fall. Mm-hmm. Who else do we got, j -Web? We got Jono from the Main. Oh, man. How did I forget Jono from the Main? Yeah. I guess it's because the demo for Jono from the Main is different than the demo for, like, being on, like, I'm, I'm on a census fail 
like outro for the podcast. Right. I don't think many Census Fail fans are going to be like, oh shit, Jonathan from the main, let me jump on that. Um, There's no one else though. But while I get at it, why not just say Katie Groves? Right. Uh huh. Um, J Web J Web has a crush on on Katie Groves. Katie Groves is great. Uh, she, one of our first interviews, with Puff Fresh. Yeah, no socks. Um, no socks forever. Yeah, Sierra from Versa. Why not? That was my other friend, John. You know what's cool is I'm just gonna say the Puff Fresh podcast with John, and I'm just it's just gonna be either me and you or me and John from All to the Press. <laughs> Nobody will know the difference. No, they will because I don't have an accent. Yeah, but. that's true. But either way, um, and yeah, so thank you for listening. Uh, all of our episodes are on youtube.com slash pufffresh, soundcloud.com slash pufffresh, which you're not going to go to. Cause sound, do you like, do you use SoundCloud for stuff? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, I use SoundCloud I don't, when I'm forced to use SoundCloud. Yeah, like I don't understand SoundCloud culture. I just throw it up there because when I throw the podcast up there, it goes to iTunes and it's convenient. And we are also on iTunes while we're on the subject. So subscribe to us on there um, if you're into that kind of thing. J-Web. Do you have anything you want to add? Nope. Not a thing? Not a thing. You never do. I don't know what to add. No? Still working on you it. You just damn thank them. They just like, spent... Yeah, shit, they, thanks, they, man. They just... The, a hour and a half of their life they just spent with us. Netflix never thanks me. It's the Puff Podcast! Puff Podcast! Puff Podcast!